Use the force to live long and prosper. I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. Lilu Dallas Multipass. Shut up and take my money. By Grabthar's hammer. <laughs> what a saving. One does not simply walk into Mordor. X never, ever marks the spot. Until he's coming. You're a wizard, Harry. Stay a while and listen. My whole Kermit is frog. Your ties are cool. So say we all. This is a play on nerds. Welcome to episode 162 of A Play on Nerds. Uh, I'm Jarvin. I'm Steve, and we have other co-hosts to help us we co-host do. the hell out of this this week. <laughs> so I have uh, my fiance, who I've only heard about recently in the last three years, <laughs> Jolie Hart. Hi. <laughs> yeah, this is my wife Anna, who you've heard laughing in the background for many years now. <laughs> hey Eight years? Has it been eight years? Many years. Many. <laughs> Almost eight. Is, it, is this going to be the eighth year of the podcast? Something like that. Shit. We're so, getting old, man. What yeah. episode number is this? This is 162, but we've done how many sappy I'm crafts? Trying to figure it out. We've done over 410 between all the different, different ventures oh. that we've done. Impressive. Yeah. Two real oppositions. <laughs> Two real oppositions. <laughs> <laughs> we have one. We show the guys. <laughs> you will never see it, people. <laughs> I think you'd actually like that. Uh, Jolie would like that. She's never heard it because it was only one episode, two episodes. Anyway. Just based off of the conversation Steve and I had about Rogue One, I think it'd be wonderful. It's trash. <laughs> Rogue One's trash. <laughs> <laughs> we can't all be right. It's okay. And ghosts aren't real. <laughs> ghosts aren't real. We're That's going through a best of here. <laughs> it's a gas leak in your home. A gas leak in your home. So basically, we are in person for this second episode ever second doing time this. Ever. Third. Um, third? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We did one in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh San as Jose well. In here. Yeah. And then San Jose, where Steve lives with Anna. And then this is the third one in Pittsburgh as well, because he's on the East Coast and I'm in Orlando. West and Coast. No, I'm saying you're currently right now. On the yeah. East Coast. Oh, oh, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, you're right though. When you, anytime you're on the same coast, coast you got to go for it, you know. Exactly, but this is uh, that's why it sounds a little echoey and different than our usual recordings. But Jarvis is gonna make it sound pretty, so don't. Oh, it's it's it don't matter. I'll try. I thought it sounded pretty good. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. Does, Darn does like voodoo magic and sacrifices <laughs> blood and stuff <laughs> on the computer. On the computer, like in Scooby Doo. So later like on, we're gonna talk about just kind of the recap of 2022. Yes. Of the entertainment from that year, and just like what we've we've experienced, New we things liked. that came out we liked or hated, shows that we caught up on, that yeah, we missed before. And video games, had a to slow down. Mm-hmm. video games, maybe books. We don't really sign of our wheelhouse, but oh. we got video games and books to talk about. Yeah. It's gonna be all sorts of fun. I only read shit for work, so I'm out of that category. But yeah. I know some books that I are on my list because of how popular they were in 2022. Okay, okay, uh, yeah, okay. That's, that's true. Close. One was on Obama's <laughs> reading list. Ooh. That's like being on Oprah's list. It's great. I can't read or write. <laughs> <laughs> but we already What's a yeah. book? <laughs> uh, but so uh, we don't really have uh, any feedback, hey, which hello, is hello. fine. We will never try to mine for feedback. You can just email us whenever you want. Yeah, That's or cool. don't. I don't care. Also, we should mention that we've had like probably six drinks tonight since yeah. we've been out and around town in Pittsburgh. Is that counting so, the drinks in, in front of us? That's counting the drinks in front of us, I think. But we'll see. So, Jarvin, I think that's a great segue to take us into some nerdy news. Nerdy news! It's time for nerdy news. All right, this week's story picked up by my <laughs> wife, Anna. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome. Uh, with the, every cheeky story comes a cheeky title, Walk Like an Englishman. Mm. Uh, <laughs> some scientists in the U.S. studied Monty Python sketch to the Bureau of Silly Walks, uh, specifically looking at Mr. Teabag and Mr. Pooty. I don't know if I got that right. I'm sorry to our UK listeners. <laughs> <laughs> um, American researchers have studied the movement and energy expenditure and basically found those two silly walks can burn as much as two times the calories. Oh. Mm-hmm. And that for just 11 minutes a day of intense silly walking, you can get their target of 75 minutes of vigorous exercise. Oh, my God. 11 minutes? 11 minutes of silly walking. <laughs> I'm down for Like it. either Mr. Teabag or Mr. Pooty. I Once again, I just don't know. I haven't watched I remember John Cleese's in particular, the, the raise that the knee. That one and seems like yeah. 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 That super high can step. get mm-hmm. you high step in And which health. specific Monty Python was that from again? The Flying Circus show. That was from Flying yeah, Circus. Okay. Was, yeah. Uh, and that is Walk Like an Englishman. Good, good news story. Yeah, absolutely. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. May we all have a vision now and then of a world where every neighbor is a friend. 
Our main segment today will be all about uh, 2022. What the hell did we see? Media, we books, TV, movies, and everything in between. Yeah. Uh, that's where we want to start. I mean, I guess the biggest thing is everything owned by Disney, which is, you know, Marvel yeah. and Star Wars. Oh, they gosh. own our lives at this point. Okay. And Disney. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Disney in general. Yeah, Pixar, everything. But Pixar has kind of fallen short as of late, I think. It hasn't been like a big hit in a long time. Well, Maybe a Toy Story 5. No. Cars <laughs> 4. Cars 4. I thought it was Wait, cars. are we really at those yet? Good Dinosaur 2. we just 4. No oh, one man. saw that. No one saw that. Good Dinosaur? The Good Dinosaur. The Good Dinosaur. The good dinosaur. I, I didn't remember. even know that came out. And nobody did. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's I didn't. Right. They're well, flying under of, the radar. Well, speaking of Disney movies that nobody knew about... Uh, did anybody see Strange Strange World? Strange Worlds? No. Singular no. plural? I feel That's... like they buried it and didn't market it at all. And then it just, it was... It came and went with a yeah. I would love to see it, though. I don't even know if it's actually good or bad, but it's just better if they didn't market it. So it just died. But it had, like, one of the first ever straight-up gay characters in a Pixar movie. And that could have, could have been important. But... Oh, was that the character played by the... Um... Jabuki White. The guy from... From Daily Show. Daily Show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, young gay. But anyways... I think Disney's big win this year, the biggest win of the year is Andor. Oh, strong agree. Strong agree. Know. Good for Star I Wars. I have not watched any of it. Oh, okay. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. I thought maybe you were going to face like you didn't like it as much. But... Did you see Rogue One? Not to no. bring up. No, because Steve said it was trash. Yeah. I trust his opinion. I didn't say it was trash. It was trash. I as long, it. As long as you, Okay. As long as you understand that it's an opinion. <laughs> I do. Trash. But I trust it. Trash. No matter like how much empirical things. data he backs <laughs> it up with. Depending on where you're coming from, as we've discussed in this episode before, it's not trash. But to speak well for Endor, I think Rogue One is such trash. But Endor <laughs> makes it Endor makes it ten percent better because it does in fact flesh out the character of Cassian Endor and helps to start to write the ship in I think the character development that I felt that Rogue One was. They really have more time to do that in TV shows, but yeah. I feel that Rogue One did an extremely good job of doing something very different with a Star Wars film that you weren't expecting. And it's just like, wow, they just did that. They made those bold choices, great actors, great dialogue, great heist plot that was so important what they did was so important for the lore of star wars in general that oh my god if they hadn't done that we wouldn't have all the other characters and it was just like it felt monumental to me so i disagree entirely rogue one has <laughs> rogue one's one of those movies type <coughs> things that i think i described like titanic and what was i mm. there's something else recently <coughs> I think maybe it was Andor. I can't remember what it was that we saw where um, basically described as, you know how it's going to end. Right. But like, y'all know these people don't die. Mm. Mm. But somehow the way that they write the story and take you through the story kind of helps you to forget that. And then every, like, every now and then you remember, oh. This dude gonna die, and you're sad about. And that. you're yeah. kind of sad about it, be, but like you know how it's gonna end. But the but the real it's the journey, not the destination, kind of movie, right? TV show. But and, I, Stephen brought good points that in our last conversation we had about the podcast, which would have made it an even better movie. But I don't. It didn't ruin it for me like it did for him, which is fair. Everyone's, me, everyone's experience like, is different. For me, they're blinding things where I'm like, how did someone miss this? Mm. How did five writers? sit this and get through screenplay and teleplay and this still is somehow this goofy mix of things. <laughs> Whereas for me, I like the prequels, so uh, take that for well, me. Well, it's okay. <laughs> As I said, everybody's entitled to their oh, exactly. <laughs> We can't all be right. Except You're for so prequels. Oh, I draw right. the line at prequels. Uh, well, speaking of Star Wars, uh, yeah. Obi-Wan. What were we thinking well, of that? Well, wait, wait, wait. Oh, we, sure. we, we didn't really give Andor a good talk. Oh, Andor, yes, of course. Because okay. Andor oh. was absolutely fantastic yeah. and we've watched almost every Star Wars series to our credit we have not seen, Boba Fett we have not seen, Bad Batch. And I hear especially Bad Batch is w worth the time. Um, oh my God, there's just so much. There's so much. There's so much, Too much media to now. absorb. Um, but I thought Andor was the best. Okay. Honestly, yeah, it, might, it, it might even be better than some of the like Marvel series. I still recently. legitimately enjoyed Mandalorian more than Andor. I thought Andor was I crafted know. extremely mm. well, but I feel like there's a different kind of experience. I had more fun watching Mandalorian, but that Andor was like watching House of Cards. Like, you're like, holy shit, I'm into this. 
Like, I want to know what happens next. Where's the intrigue happening? But then I Mandalorian was just like fun. It was just like, yeah, yeah, they're very different. They're very like, I don't even know if one's a Western, one's an intrigue show. Fun per se. Like, I wouldn't necessarily describe Man- Mandalorian as fun so much as like, a, it's a slower burn. Mm. At least for me, as I watch it, it's slow. It's, it's a different, it's a different storytelling technique. I feel than, than Andrew. So in that sense, oh, yeah, I'm not even different. comparing the two. They're yeah, just two but, different. Because now Star Wars is big enough. There's different genres within. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, I, I did. I I liked Obi Wan, but oh my god, and I liked Andor a lot more than I enjoyed. Obi-Wan. I thought Obi Wan was mad pretty much all the way through. Yeah, I mean, it was. I liked. Was, it was there. Well, I think you and I had the same complaint, which was you know he makes it, so your fear for uh-huh. that character yeah, that is one of my big issues. Isn't in general it with them So if I may, over. same thing. <laughs> it's Titanic. But swap it where you don't know everybody's gonna die. You know everybody's gonna live. Well, not live. Not everybody, but right. That one guy. So you know he's gonna make it. And I, I will think, argue any major TV show that we enjoy and watch. We know the main characters aren't going to die most of the time, and it still doesn't ruin. I the experience strongly the show. disagree with that. No, I'm saying for the majority of our major TV shows that we watch, not all of them, but. A lot of the characters network you know, television. Mm-hmm. yeah, network television. People who watch NCIS, they know that each character is not going to die each episode, but they still okay. enjoy the show. I didn't realize NCIS was on the table. I'm just talking about like we're going to talk about you know, Jags next. <laughs> you know, like if you're, Sorry. If you're playing I mean, a video game, most of the time the protagonist has survived. You're watching. Talk your, about if you're reading the Da Vinci Code, you realize the protagonist is probably going to survive Quinn the end. Next. But that's not going to ruin Quinn your experience. Just it. knowing that the characters. Not gonna die. That doesn't ruin your experience for telling the well, story or enjoying. The but story. that's what I'm saying is like the Titanic effect is knowing the ending yeah. doesn't doesn't disrupt your enjoyment of yeah. the story and the journey. And and I think also I'm insinuating that we all like Titanic. I Oh, there's one old oh, lady, and we so, only know the name of one female character. So really. predictable. That's the best oh one you she could be. Doesn't pass the... Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming we all like Titanic, and we're using that as a point of comparison. However, however the storytelling, the narrative pattern of we know how it's going to end, but still take us on a journey so we can... In- enjoy and be engaged in that journey despite knowing what the end is yeah. and i say they don't have to die they could live and still i think knowing that the main character was going to come out I, i'm not saying i'm gonna start let me preface he's making a face you can't see this <laughs> listeners, but he's making a face like i'm defending oh, the Obi-Wan. same face i would make in my chair at home <laughs> yes. i do i, I would never say I did, I did Absolutely. like obi-wan however i think if the if the two shows were just placed off of we know this main character we know what's going to eventually happen to this main character mm. i liked the journey that andor took me on despite me knowing the ending right compared to obi-wan so, so i think journey. your problem is not that that obi you know what happens to obi-wan it's if you're thinking about what happens to obi-wan that's bothering you it's because the, the show wasn't as good as you thought it was yeah, because i'm you, not talking that badly about obi-wan we keep coming back yeah, to yeah. one stuff over and over again so. oh no i'm just talking about obi-wan you said obi-wan is our which is the best mentioned. motion picture <laughs> ever created in the history of motion sorry uh, i wouldn't go that uh, far. i wouldn't go that um, <laughs> let's talk about two me. different juggernauts. Let's change it up. Let's change okay, it up. Cool, so cool, we went cool. head to head this year, literally going back to back weeks, weeks. Uh, Lord of the Rings, Ring of, Rings of Power, oh, yeah. and House of the Dragons. I watched one of those two. No, I watched one episode and one. She watched, watched House of the Dragon the episode one. There's a lot of rough stuff in that. Oh, so yes. She, oh, yes, there I is. Me- I immediately quit. Especially mm-hmm. for a mother like you mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. for a prospective mother yeah. in the future. I don't want to remember going through that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you continue to watch it. Oh, yeah. Of course. I, I, I did not continue watching. She did not continue and watching. I, and I don't feel like my life is lacking. <laughs> However, I did, well, from what I heard from just from my experience in the pilot, Pilot, yeah, pilot. Yeah, is okay. that it? That was the worst. It really that was. was. Yeah, yeah after I that, wish I could say that was true, but there's some pretty rough stuff later. But not as too. directed towards motherhood and babies. Yeah, and uh, yeah. a guy got his penis there, cut off. And so I know I have a penis. Like, there there I mean, was I plenty of that, me. but I feel like they toned down how graphic those other scenes were. Yeah, right. I watched there's Game of Thrones too, through yeah. Joffrey, yeah. through Ramsay, through. All of that, and I managed to get through the whole series, but somehow for this show, the first episode scarred me enough that I could, I, I just kind of 
Who knows? I'll, 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 maybe I'll go back. I feel day. like she will. Maybe I'll go back later. Because I've watched all of it, and I, I think I've been able to tell. She wanted me to watch it and see, like, well, let me know what you think. Right. Should I watch And this? then I moved on to all the other media and that I think exists. We will go back and <laughs> watch. Next week, now the whole season's done. She can just, like, watch the whole first season. Yeah. And without giving spoilers away, I thought it was done very well. It's like a smaller scale because Game of Thrones feels is like, more intimate. Yeah, it Game does. of Thrones covers really the whole, whole continent. This is like focusing on one family. And it's kind of like, you know, yeah. Yes, can, <laughs> can I ask a question without a spoiler answer? I'm not sure if my question will spoilers. be able to be. Spoilers. 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 No. Spoilers. Stop. I don't want spoilers. Let me preface because I listen to a lot of media podcasts. I am prefacing they are, they are not to spoil anything. Um, but like I feel like Game of Thrones, the series, gave me enough psychopaths and sociopaths <laughs> uh -huh. that I'm like, cool, I get it. There's some sociopaths, there's some psychopaths. I've met again, Joffrey, I've met Ramsey. So does Damon? Mm -hmm. Does Damon... Doctor Who, okay. Yeah, oh, yep. yeah. Oh, I yep. love Matt Smith. He's, like, one of my favorite doctors. Um, but does his... Is his character the same socio-slash-psychopath we've met? Or does he actually have a character arc? Because it seemed like... I, it was very clear from the second he was on the screen who the villain was. And I kind of wish... Not that I sympathized with him more, but that I started, like, I started out sympathizing, and all of a sudden it was like, oh, sh am I allowed to swear? Of course. Oh, shit. Yeah. Um, He's definitely more complicated than, than like he is in the first episode. He, there's a lot going on there, and you kind of understand and kind of feel for him almost, for why he became how kind of terrible he is. I don't know. That's how I, my impression I got, because it's like, yeah, I kind of get why he became this guy. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. feel like Joffrey had an arc. Granted, he was 10. 12. Right. Let's, just, see, let's always be fair. I don't know how old terrible. In the books, though, there's way more explanation about how, like, those are your Targaryens. Like, they literally are either insane or great rulers. Mm -hmm. And he's just following that pattern. Oh, right. so, okay. Like, a lot okay. of this is like they want to wait and see which one it's going to be. And with Joffrey, it's clear very early that he's insane. Yes. Right. Um, and that's but just it, cl but... clearly spelled out in the book and much more uh, gotcha. heavily emphasized. But it's not a Targaryen. He's a. No, like Targaryen. He's Baratheon, isn't he? No, not Baratheon. Well, um, he's a he's a Baratheon. Oh, wait, he's well, the Baratheon. Like, a... Baratheon, there we go. He is Baratheon? No, no. Damon's not a Baratheon. No, no I'm talking, talking about, about Joffrey. I'm tired. Is Joffrey a Baratheon? Joffrey is... is People he... are yelling at their... <laughs> yes. Joffrey yeah. Baratheon. Keep pulling your hair out. We love this one. Cersei is one family. <laughs> Lannister. Lannister. She's a Lannister. Okay. And yeah, Targaryen is Damon. Damon's a Targaryen. Yeah. Oh, so never mind. Wait, wait. I'm tired. But is, no, Joff just a piece of but is Joffrey the spawn <laughs> of it's Cersei a and what's his face? And brother and, and sister, yeah. 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 So he's a Lannister. He's a Lannister. He's, he's like a Lannister. double messed up Lannister. He's a uh -huh. Either way, Damon, yes, does get more of an arc. He's never a good guy. Nope. But he's not he's not a full on Joffrey. It's like you actually see him making machinations. He's more intelligent. He's not just this crazy, terrible bastard. I like, also feel um, like He's better at that. What do they call that? Like the mask of sanity, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. he can play the family man, but he has those moments where he breaks. Yeah, and you realize, ah, oh, shit, shit's going down. I made some bad choices with mm. this guy. <laughs> like Joffrey couldn't do that. No, no, no. There's no mask it was with Joffrey. All, right, it was yeah. all out there. Exactly. Yeah. Right, Rings of Power. I loved Rings of Power. I thought it was so. I really liked it. As a Tolkien book lover, I'm in a lot of Tolkien groups online. And they are toxic as fuck because there's a lot of <laughs> racists in there. But once you get beyond the racist criticism, they had legit criticism about like being slow burn. They felt like there wasn't a lot going on. Um, I, I feel like this season was a lot of setup. Mm -hmm. And the things that they said go against the books aren't entirely accurate because this is Second Age and there's practically nothing of the Second Age from Tolkien. And so they, they literally have not changed anything that's canon that much because there's not anything canon to say about the second age um so anyways i have a lot of thoughts on that but i don't uh, bore you guys with it but. i don't know i think on the other side of that though is that they made some tough choices in that they are choosing to explore events that are discussed are spelled out and they're clearly taking a new take on it which is difficult but i think their easier choice and maybe better choice would have been to pick something completely tell their own story away from the main plot lines well they are no 
No, they're not. Well, that's what I was going to... The new Minorian, Sauron's Return, that's all very well documented. Well, no, but... The, I don't know about... Stuff. Very, not I mean, not very well documented. documented. Sauron's it's Return documented, is not documented very well about how he came back. I mean, there's, there's stories... He was a beautiful elf in disguise who deceived That people. might still happen. They we, they didn't say that... They didn't I'm, not sure if they, I'm not sure I if just they think specified it. It doesn't it. make sense to me they're playing so close to the timeline. <clears throat> right. When there's all this other stuff they could have done and created a really original story. I hate that... For, you know, it's the same thing where I, uh, my issue with Star Wars for a long time is that everything was around the Skywalker saga, and someone just needed to like, hey, can we just pretend those movies are a thing and I just do something? Like and that. I will yeah. say that's even more egregious like because too. in Star Wars' case, they have the rights to every storyline, every plot line. They can do whatever they want, yeah. and they mm-hmm. still don't. Whereas this thing, they had very weird tight ropes. They had to mm-hmm. walk with the rights that they had available to this story. Yeah. And you're right; they could have. I mean, I they just, should have. Gotten the rights to just tell a story way in the future of Middle Earth. Yeah, they that's didn't, not even told at all. They didn't or they could have done, do or they could have done the first age, which was very well plotted out and interesting. But they didn't have the rights to that. But that would be a great story to tell because they just tell the stories <laughs> in the books. Yeah. So I guess. Um, but Second Age is very nebulous. So they're playing with thin ice. They can go anywhere they want. And it's kind of like a weird, without breaking totally from canon, I think they did a pretty good job walking that tightrope. And if I were a writer, I think opinion. I'd rather choose the the option that lets me have a bit more, f- not free will, but a, l- a little more bit freedom, more f- yeah. creative freedom than the one that is well documented. I understand that there's a lot of lore about Numenor and a lot of lore of the, oh my gosh, what are the four wizards called? The, they're, um, the, four, the, 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 the name. Oh my God. No, Everybody's I'm... yelling at the radio, radios and <laughs> AirPods and everything. And they're oh, the Maiar, yes. the Maiar is what they yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So like, um, yeah, exactly. So I, th- I feel like, Yes, there's a lot about that, but they have some options that they can kind of, you know, flush it out a bit more. And I, I really enjoyed it. I'm a Gladriel fan, so I'm I and I so I like seeing a different side She's of kind Gladriel. She's in that show, I think. She's I cool. loved Gladriel in that show. I think, Lost the cosplay I think options. Elrond and the Dwarves is the best, and the one that didn't we love those didn't scenes. get enough attention. I wish they'd had more of those characters. Yeah, there was so so fun in those scenes watching them in in Moria, basically. The dwarf that. women are amazing. She was I needed yes. more. Oh beards. my gosh! Yes, <laughs> I was promised yeah. beards, and I was given wispy bullshit. They really should have had full beards. I agree. Full what are you talking about? They beard. had great beards. Mm. The, the, the women, the, the female women. dwarves. Oh, I thought you were. T- oh, the women yeah, are supposed I get it. They're supposed to have beards. Yeah, and even one of the producers is like, "Don't worry, they're definitely going to have." I did not see a single one. Like, what the hell? Yeah, it's in this stuff. But give me like a. Like they said, it's in my contract that I do not have facial hair. <laughs> but anyways, I think it was. Of course, it's got all the money in the world thrown at it, so it's beautiful. True. The CGI is fantastic, um, and I, were, I like a lot of the casting. Some there were some things we predicted. There were some things that we didn't, and honestly, I'm okay with that. Yeah, and I, I hope it's. I hope it gets even better with season two. But I'm just betting it's gonna cause even more problems, <laughs> fans and non-fans alike. Talking about crazy predictions for something with an upcoming season, Stranger Things. Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay, the ladies season, have a season four <laughs> this year. Season it four. was season four. So, what are your opinions, people? Okay, so <laughs> cut to many, many years ago when <laughs> Sweeney Todd, Tim Burton's Sweeney Todd, comes out. Musical theater folks like myself have loved Sweeney Todd for a very long time, um, and it is it it is like the 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 dark macabre, you know, Sondheim treatment that we love and then Tim Burton and his craziness announces I promise I promise I'm getting to a point I'm gonna tell her stories um <laughs> and he announces he's making a movie version of Sweeney Todd and I don't know what people's opinions are now I'm, st- I'm still cool with Johnny Depp he's not a perfect person but you know we were we were um we were questionable about some of the casting choices but let's just long story short too late. <laughs> 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 and I and I bring you the three words that this whole thing is about. Jamie Campbell Bauer. Oh. Jamie Campbell Bauer he was in is Sweeney Todd. a complete oh. newbie. You've never seen this kid before. I, I think he was Joanna, in that guy. He, he was in what was he in he, he, he was in Twilight. Um, he was in something else. He was in a bunch of bands. I know this because my younger sister became, a, uh, right after Sweeney Todd, obsessed with Jamie Campbell Bauer. 
And so she was looking up his these indie bands he's a member of and watching these other movies and stuff with him. He gets cast in Fantastic Beasts. You know, and the point was. But the point was, <laughs> point, some of us we have been following. <laughs> some of us have been following the the rise fall rise this illustrious career of Jamie Campbell Campbell Bauer for a very long time, and then here is my thing. <laughs> I said earlier, no spoilers, but I need you to know. That's wrong now. Song? Spoilers. Spoilers. Don't you dare. Spoilers. spoilers. Done. Spoilers. 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 The first episode of Stranger Things season four, mm. and the cat and the names are coming by in the opening titles, right. and all of a sudden it's like this name we know, this name we know, this name we know. Jamie Campbell Bauer. And I'm like, Jamie Campbell Bauer is in Stranger Things season four? He hasn't done anything in like years. Fantastic Beasts stuff. And I remember because my sister was obsessed. And I'm watching this episode. I don't know if you remember. I, we're watching episode one. <laughs> and we find, and, and we get through the end of the episode. Spoilers. We get through the, the end of the episode. And I'm like, Jamie Campbell Bauer wasn't in that episode. Why was his name in, in the opening credits? And then we start watching season two, and his name's not. Episode two, yeah. Episode, sorry. Episode two of season four, and his name is not in the opening credits of season season four, episode two. And it, so it becomes very, very clear that they have contracts that stipulate if you are seen at any point in that episode, your name is in the opening credits, which then immediately says, spoilers, well, Jamie Campbell Bowers clearly Vecna. Because he was he in the clearly plays one. Vecna. Because mm-hmm. Vecna was seen at the very that end was the of only episode name one. That wasn't recognized. And he was the it. only person. So it really sucks if you've been following Jamie Campbell Bowers' career. You mean she really knew who that character was? You know what he looks like, and you're, he's right. not. He's not in this episode. The only thing we did, really didn't see was v- Vecna, yeah. really. And so it kind of sucked that. I wish I get, you know, unions and I get actors' rights as an actor. I totally get it. But it would have been wonderful for his name to be eliminated from those opening credits so it wasn't immediately spoiled for those of us who knew who he was, that clearly he's Vecna. And then we see him in later episodes and it's like, oh, that character's Vecna. Yeah, exactly. That guy's it's clear. So which it sucks. Sorry, I'm done. No, that makes sense. All right, Quantum Leap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not watching. The only person here is watching. <laughs> 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 I don't know that song. <laughs> <laughs> I can't um, put two and two together. <laughs> I've already talked about the show. It's it's fantastic. People should watch it. Get Peacock and watch it so it has more views. And But it got renewed for season two, so I'm happy. And that's all I can say. It's if you could describe it in in a, in a sentence or two, how would you describe it? Like plot-wise or Warm, wise? fuzzy, time-traveling feelings. Okay. Well, that sounds nice. Yeah. Cool. It's wonderful. It's happy. It's, it's nice. It's sweet. Does right. it even need drama? Drama, action, fun, representation. So have some good stuff. Love, romance. Yeah. Sexy times. Sexy oh, okay. times. Yeah. Cool, cool. But Ooh. much as you can on network TV, but yeah. Yeah. Like Bridgerton sexy times. Just old no. man oh. old man butts in the moonlight. <laughs> it's all they can show. What's, what's that show with the <laughs> Magnet BI guy now? <laughs> oh, blue, blue bloods. Blue bloods. <laughs> yeah, just old man ass. Old man butts in the moonlight. <laughs> All right, the movie Nope. <laughs> I loved it. Wait, hold on. What? What do you think, Anna? Nope. Okay, <laughs> I loved it. But spoilers, grain of salt. I love everything he does. Oh my yeah. god! Like I told Steve, I feel like I've been missing Hitchcock. That idea of showing the audience rather than telling them, giving mm. the audience like an ounce of credit to observe what's going on. And he does a magnificent job mm. of that in this movie. It's true. That's and, a really good comparison. And the misdirects. Analogy. Yeah. Like yeah. How you the misdirects are great in this one. The alien children. Oh, spoilers. Uh, spoilers. Don't, no, stop it. <laughs> spoilers. 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 
Maybe I won't give away that one. But I'll say it's yeah, you're right. There's there's Mr. X and like you mm-hmm, think it's gonna be about mm-hmm. something that's completely not about and Exactly. Well and I I, t- I read it very oh, much as yeah. Spielberg in the I think the comparison to Jaws are all over the place. Mm. But really that, oh, like, that's a good comparison. This too. thing just existed. It was a threat. They didn't have to explain where it came from what or the, the radioactive accident that caused it or show a flashback where it's on its planet. Oh, that's a really like, good like oh, it was I okay that, that we that didn't know all the rules. It was there to kill them, and mm-hmm. that was really all they needed to figure out. And it's yeah, bad. right. Yeah. The, what do we do? Yeah. That's an excellent comparison. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, she Hulk. Oh wait, can I say one thing? One thing. Nope. Oh. Oh. Oh about nope. Well, about nope. Yeah. yeah about <laughs> oh yeah. About yeah, nope. no. Uh-huh. Oh sorry, yeah. I thought he was literally just saying no. <laughs> you are not allowed to talk. <laughs> no. Um, I. I loved the alien design. Yes. Yeah. It was something that I don't think you give me all the drugs and creative thinking <laughs> and everything in the world. I don't know if I would have been able to come up with completely unique. Whatever that thing jacket. was. Yeah. It was a it was a Georgia O'Keefe alien yeah. well, with a with a with a steampunk mouth and uh, uh, b- balloons. The thing I told Steve was I said, it's a jellyfish. He said, what? Oh. And he said, oh. I said, no, look at it. That's it's what they studied a jellyfish. And he pictures. rewound it and was like, oh my god, That makes sense now thinking about it. Yeah. Oh, I feel like they were like Razor sucked in teeth. and then it was like a bouncy castle inside, but... Mm. A bouncy castle of death. And uh-huh. I just want to give credit to whoever came up because I oh don't my know... Gosh. It was out there. It was very I loved out there. It. it was so it was different great. from what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. I loved it. Same here. Absolutely. Okay. Sorry. She Sorry. Hulk. She Hulk. <laughs> it was okay. It was okay. I, <laughs> I'm better than okay. I, I think it, it was, started off, I didn't, I wasn't sold from the beginning mainly because of, not story, but because of visuals. Yeah, the visuals were very distracting. Mm-hmm. I really did CGI not like was visuals. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there was a halfway point maybe where I thought, Maybe they got better, or maybe I just got used to it. I right. really don't know. But I, that was rough for me. I feel like it's in a long line of the MCU suffering from they don't they don't clearly have a plan right now, and mm-hmm. they've had to do so much shuffling with the timeline and how they're going to release things um, that it's not fitting together the way I think they imagined. And I think we're starting or how to, it used to. We're yeah. starting to feel the effects of. We don't know what you want us to care about as an audience. <laughs> yeah. We've got God stuff over in Moon Knight. We got Thor, Love, and Thunder also, like, God, religious kind of stuff. You get She-Hulk with people breaking the fourth wall, and if that's actually in the show and what that means. Um, and that's from and, the comic book, if I recall. Yeah, and it's fair. It is from the comic book, but they didn't introduce it necessarily in a way that made sense. But then, like, I, Falcon Winter Soldier, which is smaller stories maybe, but we don't know yeah. what of that we're supposed to really care right. about. I don't know if it's just me, but if I see a certain level of visual technology, visual quality, I don't know if it's just my brain or because I don't know anything that goes into the actual te- technology itself, but I expect that from there on out. That level right. of quality. They're, so they're if I saw quality dipped for that yeah, show. Yeah, Infinity true. War, Endgame, um, uh, even into like Ant Man the Wasp and stuff, like the, the later movies, I feel like the visual quality was better than what I saw in She-Hulk. And well, so maybe I they'll learn like, a lesson from it then. Maybe this is just the first one where they're going to realize, ah, oh, we can't do full body characters. This is... Maybe not. not for a whole TV this show. Is not for a whole TV show. Yeah, because you can do costumes, all... The whole, for, the whole yeah, for movies where he's in some scenes, sure. Yeah. But also just... Full body female characters. I feel like this also was uh, a, a, a lot of these disconnects in timelines and release dates is because of the pandemic. We're really feeling the effects of the shows that were filmed starting before the pandemic mm-hmm. and then during, and then things were changed. People got COVID, they had to delay that show, but keep this one going that was supposed to come before that show, and like everything mm-hmm. got smoothed around. So I think it's going to be a little smoothed out by the end of this. And I, I just saw that Screen Crush guy we talked about yeah. a lot. He talked about his theories for the next phase coming and how I think it will kind of just flush there's, out a little bit. There's just better. so much. And then you have the Eternals, which are their own cosmic right. thing, which it's is just, starting out. It's just and hard I feel for like me they introduced like, something wrong. Give a shit about. Yes, because then they did Eternals, and then they did Moon Knight, which I didn't dislike. I liked Moon Knight. Moon Knight was okay. But yeah, then yeah. spoilers. Spoilers. There's spoilers. like straight up <laughs> celestial events that can be seen from every corner of, of the planet. The planet. A hand raising from the earth, grass. And I'm just the sky. saying. And then, and I'm just talking about the stars changing. Yeah. Much oh, yeah. less the big. 
metal being that now exists reaching right. out from the water and it i'm sorry nobody no like nobody <laughs> none of the other Avengers. nobody no nobody's showing up nobody's talking about thought, this thought nobody it was busy yes yeah was everybody was busy but i liked moon Knight. it was just it took some steps i guess that's 2021 though that's yeah. not 2020. was it really how long ago hmm. Wow. We're getting old, you know. Everything yeah. blends together. Um, because <laughs> before she helped, or at the same time, was Miss Marvel, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh, Miss Marvel like. was good. That was a fun really watch. Nice. I enjoyed Miss Marvel. Yeah. I feel like Don't I could watch that with my good. kids. I don't know if that was this year. We watched it with Joyce. Nice. Yeah, I feel like that could be something I could watch with a younger person. Mm -hmm. And they would like it. What'd you say, Will? So came out? I don't know. Was Shang-Chi, was that this year? I thought Shang-Chi was last year. I thought it was maybe. last year. But our uh, trailer we're talking about later, he's in that. I was going to bring that up. Yeah, that's true. Uh, just a quick tag for Willow is trash, and I'm sorry. Willow. Steve is very disappointed. I was... I've never seen... Watch the original, no. and then just forget the new things happening. But watch the original. <laughs> it really so is worth it. so kind to her. That's the first time I haven't heard you tear someone apart for not seeing Willow. I've also never <laughs> seen Homo Willow. Now that there's new terrible Willow, I just don't... I think I just you don't want it to, to tarnish. Yes, I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's on our list. She's going to watch Willow eventually. It's great. Just ignore the show, please. There was something else that I didn't want to tell Steve I'd never seen, but I've never seen, and now I forget. Is it a it Muppet was. thing? Because it could be a Muppet thing. Um, I don't think it was a Muppet thing. Labyrinth? There are a couple. Fraggles, Labyrinth. No, I've seen Fraggle. I've Dark seen Crystal. That. Muppets I've, Tonight. Dark Crystal scared the shit That's out of me as a shit. kid. <laughs> That's it why it's so good. It didn't even scare. It was disturbing. I it would it disturbed me as a child, uh, and so I watched a, a, most of it, and then I was uh, and no, there was something else. I, everything, I, everywhere, all at once. Oh God. That's a movie we saw, and it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of the multiverse uh, kind of movie. Coming around the same time as... Uh, I've heard nothing but good things, but we have not seen it. Did not see it. It was just, it's very weird, very kooky, very fun, Got silly. For it. I'm it's, not sure what happened. A lot happened. I don't think I disliked it. I'm not saying I disliked it. I'm just not sure what I saw. It has a return of short round, so... Yes. Yeah. Who's okay. great, honestly. Like, He's that really I do know. He's great. He's so, up for a work. So I'm going to move us into COVID catch-up. COVID mm. catch up. Well, during COVID, we've had a little bit of downtime, and I've been using it to binge and go back and watch things. Backlog. That we haven't, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. haven't watched mm -hmm. before. It is the time to have a backlog. Mm -hmm. uh, Shit's Creek. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wonderful. my God. Just wonderful. I love this journey for you. I love this journey. <laughs> <laughs> I love this story for you. Divad. <laughs> no, that show. Fruit wine. <laughs> <laughs> All I remember was... Waking up with a newborn and f trying to find that line of like something that's going to keep me awake, but it's not going to be so intense and I'm going to be stressed out. And my friend recommended that show to me. And that's how you watch most of it. And I think I, I like, like sleep deprived me was like, no, it's a good idea to watch the whole first season in one night. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. And then Steve came out and I was like, you have to watch this show. It's nice, though, because it's shorter episodes. It's not yeah. your normal, right. like, you know, 40-something episodes. And it still makes you feel something, like, throughout. You don't expect throughout. these silly characters in a sitcom yeah. to make you cry eventually. And right. They do. Because you hate them all. And, well, you, don't don't yeah, hate you hate them. them all, but they're unlikable. You from, have no empathy design. for them. The first episode, yes. you're like, oh, yes, you're comeuppance. Yes. This is they're what I want to watch. Design, but then but you're rooting for them by the end of season one. Turns. Oh, yeah. my gosh. It's It's... You can have those discussions of like, which character arc was your favorite. And I, for me, I think it's Alexis's arc. I feel like it changes every time it I watch the show. It does change every time. Mm -hmm. You're following each time. Yeah, because the show. first watch through was Moira. I loved how she changed. <laughs> the croning. The croning. <laughs> the croning. A woman with an indistinguishable accent. <laughs> so, just to be clear... Um, I'm a red wine drinker. That's fine. Okay, cool. But, uh, I only drink red wine. Okay. And up until last night, I was under the impression that you, too, only drank red wine. But I guess I was wrong. I see where you're going with this. Um, I do drink red wine. But I also drink white wine. Oh. And I've been known to sample the occasional rosé. And a couple summers back, I tried a Merlot that used to be a Chardonnay, oh. which got a bit complicated. Okay, yeah, so you're just really open to all wines. I like the wine and not the label. Does that make sense? Yes. 
That does. Okay. Um, this is just very new to me, so as long as you didn't roll over and cry yourself to sleep with regret, then we're good, right? No, 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 I absolutely did that. Just wept for hours in the dark. I say we go with this one, it's the biggest. We love trash TV. We're taking yes. it in regularly. Yes. Wanna... Dance Moms. Oh, my God. Oh God. Okay. Yes. Oh God. What do you watch this on? Uh, Is that Hulu. on Hulu? Oh, it's on Hulu. Hulu. That's part. Yeah. I love some trash TV. <laughs> I Just love trash, trash TV. Tragic drama. I eat it up like spaghetti. My favorite with Dance Moms is how many times the moms in like the talking head section say like, I know this isn't good for my child. I so know I should money. take them my out. My daughter doesn't deserve this. I should just quit. I'm like, yes. But that money's real nice, I bet. Yeah, the contracts oh they sign up. That free time's real nice, I bet, for your daughter who wants to be These a career children. dancer. And they're not all JoJo Siwa. Stage moms are a real thing. Oh, well, they are. <laughs> oh, well, they are. What about books and video games? Mm. Mm. I got this kind of bummed Red Dead Redemption. You did. Dilly bought it by accident. <laughs> oh, so you did and I found out now. On what? On the PS5. He mashed buttons in the they right order. buttons and got to it, and I got a receipt. Went, what the hell? All right. Did well. he come over and. I think it's only available for PS4, so like it's backwards he, compatible. He bought, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I came over that and went, well, I guess I'm playing it. Mm -hmm. Fun? It was yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, good. I enjoyed the GTA games, and it's very much in the same vein from my place. Which said Old West. Yeah. I like it. We wanted really? to get that. I've never heard it compared to... And I, I feel like company. I'm a gamer, but... I know it's the same company, but I've never actually heard it compared to GTA. It's basically which GTA I don't think I could ever in the Old West. Yeah. That's why I liked. That's why I told you I think I like it better than this in a more fantastical setting. I didn't, I didn't always I mean, you still GTA shoot people so with guns and, yeah. and, and then rob people. So I just didn't like GTA as much because it's like, I don't like playing in the urban urban setting. But Western, I'm like, okay, I'm a little more interested now. But it's basically GTA in the West. That's basically what it is. I like a good shooter RPG. It mm -hmm. doesn't, it like, like, I don't care if it's, con like, I love the Fallout series. And, you know, so I, I like, I, I, I like, I love a good shooter. I'm really getting into, we'll talk about Mass Effect in a second. But I've always wanted to play Red Dead, and I feel like Red Dead 2 is available everywhere, mm. but I can't find Red Dead 1 mm. anywhere except like PS Now back in the day. So I've never had a chance to play it, and I've always wanted to play it. Too, I've always wanted to play it, so I have no idea. We have a PS4, tell us how to play it besides <laughs> buying it. And have you know. played any games? Not really. Not really? That's nope. fine. <laughs> you keep I've just been playing Hearthstone and random things have been out for 13 years. You started COVID, catch up. up. No. COVID, catch up. COVID, you started New Vegas. Up. I did finish Arkham Asylum. Nice. Mm -hmm. from also, probably 12 years ago. Shredder's <laughs> Revenge. I played Shredder's Revenge. That was a lot of fun. Good. Xbox. Yeah. Started a thing in Mortal Kombat 11. I beat Mortal Kombat 11. Mm -hmm. that was fun. Nice. You started Guardians of the Galaxy. That one's not as which fun. Which one? It won a lot of awards. It just didn't. It's, yeah, it's yeah so did Rogue One. <laughs> Rightfully so. Trash. Uh, mm. So I think uh, Goldberg's. Goldberg's is sure catching up on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Horizon Dawn Forbidden West. Horizon, Horizon <laughs> Forbidden West. Horizon Forbidden West, the sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm -hmm. Which is absolutely like I thought the first game was fantastic. I have a huge crush on Ashley Birch. Who voices hit me the up, main Ash? Character. Hit me up. Gotcha. Yes, she hit is. Me up. She is not one of the five. I'm sorry. <laughs> one of the five. What that I'm allowed? Not, the five listeners. That... Oh, she is not. Oh. <laughs> I'm letting you know that there's a low chance this will reach anyone. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a specific. I, I'm, I'm gonna send this to all the social needs. All of the social needs. All right. Okay. Um, but anyway. Um, Good game. Yes, I loved her. I loved Horizon Zero Dawn. I played it like three years late, um, and so I was all prepped for Forbidden West, which was again absolutely fantastic. But I'm pissed. Beautiful game. Because, and as a PS5 owner, you don't have to be pissed. But I'm pissed because at the Game Awards just a week or two ago, it was announced that the Forbidden West DLC, Burning Sands, Burning Sands, maybe. Don't yell at your radios. Sounds right. Um, is only going to be released for PS5. Uh, even though I'm a PS4 owner, and I get it, but you can't even find this console. I mean, you, you can't. If you're lucky, you can find a console. It's still hard to find. And I get moving forward to the next gen. I absolutely get that we're ready. The PS4 has been out for a very long time. However, 
circumstances dictate I most people can't get their hands on a PS5. Why are you putting this DLC for people that bought it on a past console and now I can't play it and I feel like I'm getting yeah. I think I've played through almost the entirety of the Mass Effect series this year. I know I'm behind, but I played one. I hate the car. And then I played two, one of the best games I've ever played. And now I'm on three, which got serious real, real fast. And I'm really hoping to finish it before New Year's. I'm about a little less than halfway through, I think. They're great games. I think I'm about in the mid to late teens hours in. And we'll see. Yeah, awesome. books. Oh, books. books. You're reading Fairy Tale. Yep. Fairy Tale by Stephen King. Mm. I love it. Not I'm Fairy about... Tale, the manga. No. 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 I'm sorry. As Steve said when we started dating, I like you because you're a classic nerd. You like books. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Um, <laughs> books are amazing. But I I have trouble getting into Stephen King because I feel like he's kind of rambly. Mm. But I have a sister-in-law who has read almost all of his books because she reads insanely fast. And she was like, this is different from anything I've read by him. I think you'd really like it. So I gave it a try, and I really love it so far. It's like his version of a fantasy novel. Oh. It's really, really fun. Really so fun. Steve, you read a lot of Stephen King back in the day when you were moving on the subway. Yeah, work. I read The Hit and I read The Stand. These are all so long. Is Fairy Tale that long, too? Uh, on my little Libby app, it's 936 pages, so Ooh. not as long as most of his. Oh, Jesus. Most of his are much That's longer. a short book? Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, for King. Most of his cool, are cool. much, much longer. Damn. Yes. Well, that was our book segment. <laughs> hey, I our know. books episode got a lot of views. Books is still one of our highest viewed episodes. I don't get to talk okay, about so more books. I'm No, wait, let's please. talk more about books. More books. Lisa Jewell, if you like suspense novels... She's great. I believe she's British because her first novel I read, she was talking about chips and a ranch, and I was really confused until I realized they were in England. <laughs> uh, and chips are fries. <laughs> <laughs> that made perfect sense. Um, the Only Good Indians, I believe. I'll check the title. But um, is excellent by a new author who also does suspense books. Okay. And <laughs> mostly I've just been working through Lisa Jewell, though. She has a lot of books. So, I heard much better. I'm going to continue talking about books because y'all don't yes. talk about books enough. I want to get into more thrillers and more darker themes. However, I've managed to steer not very far from like rom coms. And I like a little steam, but like it's, it's <laughs> like a, the more lighthearted side of things, some contemporary lit. And one that I have not gotten to yet, but I have been dying to read is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir? He did a Andy Weir. Did the Martian. He did the Martian. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was on Obama's reading list. <laughs> <laughs> Are you um, so fancy? It's on there. <laughs> oh, no, no. it's 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 really big, and I heard fantastic things. But the book that I just started um, was Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which is in my suitcase downstairs <laughs> right now. Um, and as a video game lover, it's kind of a more like contemporary. Like there's romance, but there's it's more contemporary lit, but it's through the vein of video game design and video game creation, narrative right. design, and so I'm I'm excited to can I I just restarted cool. it because I started it didn't continue, but then it won all these awards. <laughs> like I'm picking it up again. I had heard so it. tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Okay, corrections corner for me. Oh, um, correction. Title corner. was the only good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. Mm. Really great. Like, I was able to predict a handful of plot points, but overall, I like it's one of those books where I got to the end and I was like, what? Did I, I love I a good read? twist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> really great. I like when I, What's the author I, again? I can't, but Stephen Graham Jones. Stephen Graham Jones. Stephen Graham Jones. Graham Jones. I, I, I can't usually pr predict things, but I really, really like when it really does, when I can s finish a book in a couple sittings. Mm hmm. Because you have to. Because you have to, you know? Shirley Jackson. Short novels. We're going we're gonna to talk. We're gonna I'll talk. give you a list. So what's next, Steve? <laughs> well, I think that takes us out of our 2022 year-end wrap-up. <laughs> <laughs> and takes us to some group trivia. I did not know that. Movie trivia is the illest. I did not know that. I'll ace any trivia quiz you bring up. I honestly did not know that. Yeah. Ooh. I've got ten questions about Christmas music trivia. Uh, since we've never really done this before, I would like whoever's gonna say ding. Do we raise and I will hands? Call just that say person. ding. I'm gonna say, say ding. ding. I will just call that ding. person, and that way, if two people will try to go at the same time, we'll do it okay. in order. Okay. 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 <laughs> so we've got some uh, 
holiday music trivia for you. Everyone say ding when you're ready to ring in. Ding. And then I'll say who goes first, oh. just in case. <laughs> <laughs> We've been drinking. I love your enthusiasm. <laughs> I'm just I'm testing out my buzzer. All right, we're ready for <laughs> Making one. sure my buzzer works. <laughs> Uh, in the song Jingle Bells, what kind of sleigh is referenced? Ding. Oh, Anna. A one horse opens. That is correct. Damn it. Anna with a big answer. Oh, gosh. I see who we're up against now. <laughs> <laughs> Question two. On the 10th day of Christmas, what does my true love give to me? Ding. Oh. Lords a leaping? That is 10. Lords a leaping. Yes. Nice. God damn it. Yes. <laughs> Which holiday song begins Joy to the World? Ding. Jolie. Now hear me out. Okay. <laughs> you have a story to tell first? <laughs> I... Joy to the World. <laughs> oh, crap. You're really on. I'm going to try to sneak that one in. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Question okay. four What color was the Christmas that Elvis Presley sang? Ding! Ding. Yeah. It was really first. Blue. Mm. It was blue, blue Christmas. Oh, okay. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> All right. <now. laughs> I had a frog with it. Yeah, the literal uh, frog. In the song, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. What is the prettiest sight to see? Ding. Jolie. Grr. The carol that you'll sing. No, that ding, is not the ding, 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 I don't know. I didn't bring. Look up, I've got the one happiest line thing here. you bring is the carol that you'll sing at your own front door. Ooh, I'm gonna Google this later. <laughs> <laughs> but until then, Anna with the point. Anna with the Question point. Question six: right. What Christmas song has the line "I don't know if there'll be snow, but have a cup of cheer"? Ding. Jolie. Hold on, I thought I could think about it real fast. Ding, ding, no, ding, no, ding, no, wait. Ding, ding. All right, over to Anna for a pickup. God damn it. Have a holly jolly Christmas. That's holly jolly Christmas. Oh, oh man. I just wanted to sing. <laughs> In 1953, this Christmas song was Eartha Kitt's biggest hit of her career. Ding. ding. And uh, oh. driving by a nose. Tiny nose. The um, San, uh, no, um, I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. Ding, yeah. ding, no. ding, 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 with the pickup. steel Santa baby. That's yeah, right. you were on it. You, you were on it. You knew it. You just, just close. I trip here in my head. I could yes. feel it. But it's just... mm-hmm. Question eight Jimmy Boyd was only 12 years old in 1952 when he scored a hit with the song about something that happened under the mistletoe. What is the name of the song? Ding. Oh, Anna. shoot. I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. That's, That's correct. Just That's correct. Oh, you were just one answer ahead. Right? There's a handful of like children singing terrible Christmas songs. Mommy uh, had some self control issues. <laughs> <laughs> just putting that out there. <laughs> Question nine: On which feast day did Good King Wenceslas step out? According to the well-known song. Ding. Anna. On the Feast of Stephen? On the Feast of Stephen. Uh, Fuck you, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Eat shit every day. On the Feast of Stephen. Hmm. All right, last question. Injection. Who recorded the original and still most famous version of White Christmas in 1942? Ding. Oh. Bing Crosby. That's Bing Crosby. Nice. Yeah. Nice done. All right, let's see. Jarman, you walked away with two. Oof. Uh, Jolie, you also got to. Oh. That means Anna, you stepped away with a big six. Oh Holy my gosh! God. Yes. Tell me steals too. I love that story for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> well, German, I think that takes us into some trailer reviews. Trailer reviews. <laughs> So we had Jolie picking out a great trailer for us today, which is the. I highly recommend it. What is it? Oh, I was doing another joke for oh, another podcast. That's joke. part of our uh, I did. segment. Is, yeah. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up. I did. I chose the trailer for this. It was Barbie. Barbie. The Barbie movie. The teaser. The we teaser. We don't know much about the story, but. I will say that I had no interest or negative or, you know, 
there was Completely neutral interest neutral. in yeah. a Barbie yeah. movie. Um, but then seeing this trailer, I'm like, oh, this looks hilarious and kind of like making fun of itself. And as a 2001 Space Odyssey fan, yeah. I was a that big too. fan of this That's trailer. True. <laughs> big fan. Steve, what'd you think? Um, if it carries the same energy, they you know we saw so little of it. It's hard to know what the story's going to yeah. be with it. But if the mood of the movie is conveyed in this very short teaser, then I think we're for a good time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely seem to have a uh, sense of humor about itself, <laughs> which is nice to see. Um, I also love that she was dressed in like the original Barbie yes. outfit. I agree too. That was like the original first Barbie mm-hmm. outfit. I yeah, like in like that. the 1950s. Okay. Yeah. that's cool. So I thought that was very cool. Mm. Um, full circle, shout out to Shang Chi, mm, who mm-hmm. was like doing some like mm, some I can't move. see, but I was <laughs> there was a there was an aerobics kind of move there going on. That's right, it has a, Ryan a Tiger Gosling Woods punch of sorts. Ken. Yeah, mm. that um, makes sense. There it was does make sense. other actors that are known to be in it, but I don't know what they're doing yet. But um, yeah, and then what's her name? Margot Robbie. Margot, Margot Robbie playing Barbie. Barbie. The plot will be who knows. Um, who the hell knows? But Greta Gerwig, who directs it, has done a lot of fun stuff recently. What else did she did she do? La- Lady Bird and um, the the uh, Little Women as well. Really? Oh, yeah, Greta Gerwig. I I loved Lady Bird. I loved the Little Women remake. Yeah, so, so they all have faith in her putting on a yeah. fun movie with this thing. And would you, with the person, people with a girl as a daughter, would you want her watching the show or the movie? I think she portrays. Uh, content. I feel like I'd have to see a longer um, trailer yeah, to make that choice. Gonna be, if it's gonna be, did it's you like guys see Lady Bird slash Little Women? No. I did. I not. think she portrays women on screen very strongly. And also, I it's really do. Very real, like it's real like, this and. Is, yeah. Directed by a woman, Real you can strong. tell, like it's showing, like this is how women actually act. As I would trust. I women. would trust her to portray women positively, strongly, independently, cool. self-assuredly on screen. I really, really do. Unless it's like a rated R movie, I'm not sure. Sure. But then it'd be a different story. Yeah. But, but I don't know. I, I, I feel like a Barbie movie would be the op- a great opportunity to make like a feminist statement, yeah. and you know. Originally, it was a German sex doll. So. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So it's I'm going to give this man. one for our rating. Oh, yeah. I'm going to oh, give God. this an embarrassed oh, Gary Busey playing with Barbies, but he's playing where they give him an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> now for for Armageddon 2, the winner is Gary Busey. <laughs> he's playing with him and Raul Julia walks in and he's really embarrassed. <laughs> what are you doing? Again? <laughs> I'm giving this... Uh, Gary Busey's watching this trailer. He's like, oh, yeah, fucking hot women. This is great. And Roger was like, no. And he slaps him. He says, this is a feminist statement. Feminist statement. This will be a beautiful film about women and their rights. I'm sorry, Roll. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then the, that's, that's, that's our review of that movie. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Damn, we had a great opportunity to come into this with a Gary Busey, Raul Julia thing. And that completely was, I forgot prepped, about this rating system. I'm prepped for 2022, and I and yep. I did. I completely discarded the fact that I reviews. really would, you, would, just have would you like I really, to try a Gary Busey impression now? <laughs> impression? Pass. No, no, that is a hard <laughs> one. Wow. This growl, you have to show as much teeth as you can. Is that hey, man, 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 man. So, like, you say Gary Busey, but like you kind of come up with like Harry Carey as movies. well. Jim See, Carey. how? No, Harry Carey. Oh, Harry Carey. <laughs> oh my God, a little bit. But it's Jeff It's Harry like if Harry Carey was on meth for three years. Yeah. Can you do, yeah. like, My Favorite Planet is the Sun, but is Gary Busey? <laughs> if you were hot, no. Would you hate yourself if they make me more meth? <laughs> if you were hot, no. Would you hate yourself? I see the difference would you, now. Would you oh, I see it. Yeah. I, mean, I see it now. I would. I would. It's like the Smell difference. Smell myself in mustard. Yeah. I feel like it's the difference between like a domesticated pet dog yeah. and a wolf. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. not a smart. That's fair. But not, not a smart, smart wolf. No. A wolf that's not a, pretty, not a. It's a brain damage. <laughs> yeah. Not a wolf that can take care of itself out. In the open. So that's a our wolf with no skills. Uh, Can I bring up a second? I know we didn't plan for this. A second trailer. That <laughs> we didn't now that we're sitting here. <laughs> but now that we're sitting here, did anybody see the second Super Mario trailer? No. Oh. no. We, I almost had us review it for one of our episodes because they released a longer one with a little more of Chris Pratt. I so still don't like Chris Pratt as, as Mario. Ooh. However, this one was like sexy. 
fierce warrior Princess Peach. Mm. And I, 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 we should have watched it before the episode. I was already going to say me. sexy plumber. I was, no, this one was I more. I didn't know where that was yeah. going for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Sexy Bowser with his spikes. What sucks is the movie looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun. And I think like, I will enjoy the movie. Chris Pratt is doing but I, Chris I'm Pratt's not Chris, Pr- Chris Pratt is not the best of the Chris's anymore. Mm-mm. That's right. At all. Unfortunately. Yep. But uh, we'll see how that turns out. Well, that brings Andy us to the end of episode 162 of Play on Nerves. Join us next time for an episode so special that we haven't even discussed what it is yet. I think we did. Did we? I think Let's we look. planned out what it was. Let's look. Let's tell our listeners that we'll do it live. <laughs> do it live. We'll do it live. Hold on, you five guys. Hey, five like, guys. Like the burgers? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I would love fries and chocolate shake, Nope. Shakes, this please. episode, which we are tentatively calling For the Ladies. Oh, yes. <laughs> to celebrate the ladies in our lives. Uh, oh. is the next one coming out. We don't have anything planned up. I could have sworn we did, but never mind. We're normally so good, but that's that's a problem for future us. Oh, yeah. Is it going to be happening after the new year? Yes. Yeah, this will be our New Year's episode, basically. Yeah. Oh, well, New Year, new you guys. That's right. Mm-hmm. But really just the same, same old us. Same, uh, <laughs> same boring <laughs> cis white men over 30 talking about nerdy shit. <laughs> uh, but keep on coming back and our, being our nerdy listeners. We will keep on coming back and being your nerdy co-hosts. Thanks again, Internet. Stay nerdy, my friends. And a special thank you to Anna, my wife. Thank and you for coming on. Jolie, my fiance. <laughs> All right, <laughs> make it a good new noises. year, baby. Noises. Yeah. Pew, 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 pew. Make bad choices. <laughs> make all the choices. <laughs> Run the yellow lights. What did you just say, Stephen? Stay Drive blocks. fast, take chances. <laughs> if it's yellow, go for it. <laughs> yes, exactly. I love this journey for you. Yes. <laughs>36 hours. I need more blue towels. I more blue it. towels. It's How many more? All the blue towels. All the blue towels. Thank you. Steve and I are just I don't even sitting know how that here. You, I, I need you, you to this know. In. This is brilliant podcast. Oh, of course. Man. I need this you to fantastic. know. I'm speaking for Steve, but obviously we're here if you need us. <laughs> Thoughts you, and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. If you need <laughs> Oh my god. How if many blue towels exist? If you're wondering what a, a, blue, wondering what a blue towel is, it's a towel surgeons use to absorb oh, blood. Can I lift this Steve's carefully? Steve's dad was a nurse and yeah, he gives probably. it. I got it. They are the best cleaning towel you'll ever have. Radical recommend, get a blue towel. Radical recommend, get a blue towel. Bam, radical recommend, you heard it here oh, first. Can, is, wait, is it in Grey's Anatomy? I got it. Thanks. No, that's the laptop. Oh, can I add that to my list of Grey's Anatomy? <laughs> Can I please add that? All right, so let's talk about Stranger Things. No, Stranger we're getting, Things. Getting cleaned up. You were Hold saying on. Sweeney Todd thing. Yeah, I'm confused. Okay, so sorry. sorry. <laughs> please lead us on this path. I'm sure you were very cleanly and perfectly edited into this moment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so let There's me no continue pressure. like there was absolutely no break in the action. Yep. Can I open the champagne? <laughs> yes, yes, do it live on air, please. Do it, do it, do it. Get away do from it. the microphone. Oh, excuse me. It won't matter. <laughs> what do you mean it won't matter? I don't know, man. Here, I'll open this. Me? No, I got it. from the light fixture. Okay. No, I got it. Mm-hmm. I'm, this is gonna take. This can be nothing. She opens these all the time. I do. Take the drink back. Are you gonna spill it again, or Jarman? No. You <laughs> really have had trouble keeping <laughs> drinks in one piece. <laughs> Look at you, ready to party. Can you re- rephrase that as, it's only 11.30? He did. Or, oh my it's God. only 11.30? It's only, oh, I think so. Oh, it's 11.30. Party. I didn't know if that was, party. oh, it's earlier than only. I thought or later than I thought. Only. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, no. All right, Jeremy, you're the only one in trouble. Uh, blue towel. Get those blue towels. I'm so glad I did it. I decided to do it over the table mm-hmm. instead of instead the of rug. Like you did the other night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where'd it go? Oh, Every, my God. Just here. It didn't go in the rug. I hope we're still recording. Are we out of blue? Okay, good. Four. 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 Guys, blue towels. Blue towels. Blue towels. Get yourself a blue towel. I'm serious. It wasn't. Man. It wasn't a two towel job. It's like job. this and burp rags are the best things I've ever cleaned with. 